Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. Although Valerie was stunned by this response, she really couldn't say she was surprised by her husband's lack of jealousy. And to be fair to Dane, his lack of jealousy has always been something of a blessing. Valerie was one of those women who attracted attention. Standing just under 5 feet 10 inches tall, she had what could conservatively be called a voluptuous figure. Now, at the age of 29, the brunette secretly felt that she looked better than she did at 19. Her waist was narrow, and her stomach was flat, turning into rounded hips, which spoke more about a beautiful woman than a pretty girl. She cut her wiry pubic hair neatly, never resorting to the mohawk haircut that seemed so fashionable from time to time. The legs, although slender, were muscular and athletic, completing an ensemble that made most men feel a little out of place. And here she is, telling her husband about a young cashier who molested her. And Dane was not only not jealous, but also offered her to accept an offer of a date over a cup of coffee. To tell the truth, Val was a little annoyed. Dane really knew the cashier who was molesting her, or at least knew who she was talking about, he could at least pretend to be a little jealous, even if he was just doing it as a compliment to her. Maybe I should mention that he also works out in my gym, she thought to herself, but this caused another fit of indignation. There was a time when Dane trained with her, but these days he was doing kickboxing for fun. Which was another thing she just I didn't understand. How can you relax from blows to the face? I'm serious. Go if you want. It can be fun. Valerie chose to ignore his words, quickly leaving the office. You idiot. She thought to herself as she stomped into her studio. She had never even considered cheating, but she couldn't help but wonder what Dane's encouragement really meant. You can go use yourself tonight, man, she growled softly. She wasn't going to indulge his whims, not now, not ever. Someone must have been pounding on his thick skull with a baseball bat, knocking all the remnants of common sense out of his pea-sized brain. Asshole. On Friday morning, Valerie was working with a barbell in the gym. Doing the bench press, she was furious, her dark eyes flashing lightning. This morning, when she was about to go to the gym, Dane announced that he would be out of town for the weekend, as he was going to help some kickboxing club fighters at the national tournament. No warnings, no discussions, just, I won't be here. Bastard. She hissed, straining, her hands shaking with fatigue. I hope you weren't talking to me, a voice said, followed by a disarming smile and blue eyes. Not to you, Valerie grumbled, lowering the barbell to her chest. That was the last thing she needed a boy from the store. Push, Ralph said slightly helping her to do another repetition. Arching her back with an effort, Valerie felt a burning sensation in her hands when she lifted the barbell up for the last time. Stretching her arms up, she felt Ralph put the barbell in the racks. When she felt the barbell secure, she let go and sat up, grabbing a towel to wipe the sweat from her face and chest. Could you help me? Ralph asked, pushing the new weights towards her barbell. Of course, she said becoming even more annoyed by his audacity at interfering with her training regime. Having settled on the bench, the 18-year-old quickly took up a position and began to perform warm-up repetitions with relaxed grace. When he was done, he took some dumbbells off the barbell, adjusting the weight so that it would better fit Valerie. With a smile, he motioned for her to take a seat on the bench. She reluctantly complied. Looking up as she gripped the crossbar, Val couldn't help but notice a bulge not too high above her face. The youth seemed to have a lot of big muscles. Are you ready? Valerie nodded. Sure he'd noticed her gaze and angry with herself for it. The little pervert probably took this look as an invitation to further harass her. Lower the bar lower. It will give you the best effect, Ralph said as she completed the first rep. In the second repetition, she did it, feeling the crossbar touching her chest. By the sixth repetition, her hands were on fire, but there was something else she felt an unpleasant warmth from the intimacy of the situation. With each repetition, when she lowered the barbell to her chest, Ralph's hand came into contact with her cleavage as he helped hold the barbell with one hand. Good job, there are three left, said Ralph, switching to a two-handed grip of the barbell. He thinks I can't do this, Val thought to herself but something else stirred in her head when she lowered the bar. She could have easily stopped the repetition halfway, 
but something made her lower the bar all the way down. Her face contorted with concentration, she presented a stunning sight to her training partner as she removed the barbell. His muscles were moving too. Ten minutes later, they were doing the last set of bench press. Val caught Ralph's eye as she was about to dry off. What? He seemed confused. It's just that you look so good. Wet and all, I was hoping you'd stop drying off all the time. Suddenly, electricity appeared in the air. Val was angry, but at the same time there was something else a kind of revival. She slowly wiped her face, gathering her thoughts, and then lowered the towel. The last set is yours, Ralph, she said firmly. He quickly took up a position and began pumping out repetitions. Three, four, five, six. The muscles tensed and writhed, almost hypnotizing her. It was very interesting to watch him. When he was done, he sat down, breathing deeply but evenly. Turning to her, he asked, Now I need to do some squats. Will you join me? I don't think so, Val replied quickly, not even allowing herself to think about the possibilities of such a situation. I'll hang around for a bit, and then I'll leave. Okay, Ralph said, clearly disappointed. But call me if you ever need help. Thanks for the help this morning. I enjoyed it, Doc. He probably liked it even more, she thought to herself, wondering why she even said that, knowing that it would serve as motivation for him to continue pursuing her. The boy visibly perked up when she turned and walked towards the stationary bikes. She could feel his eyes following her all the way. I'm doing this because I like the attention, she replied to herself, but tried to put these thoughts aside, hide them, and not think about it further. After choosing a route program, Val got into a steady rhythm and almost immediately found herself breaking her new vow by thinking about the last 15 minutes. To tell the truth, this situation turned her on. The forbidden flirtation made her pulse quicken, and her juices flowed like a river. As the images flashed through her mind, she strained herself to the limit, trying to block them out. Unfortunately, it didn't work at all, as the rush of blood combined with the friction on the seat seemed to only worsen her problems. Knowing that he was there, and being all too aware of the glances he kept throwing at her as he walked around the gym, made everything more problematic. She wanted to jump off her bike and rush to the sauna, where she would quickly fall into nirvana. Well, that was the second best option. What the hell am I doing? She thought angrily to herself. It wasn't like her at all. She couldn't believe that a combination of physical exercise and a few innocent touches could bring her to such a state. Damn you, Dane, she hissed. It's your fault. Finally, after hearing the beep, Val began to slow down giving her body a chance to cool down properly. Watching Ralph, she knew that he had noticed everything. He seemed to be vacillating aimlessly, but she could see the little gears turning in his head as he gathered his reserves. That's it, she chuckled to herself as he approached her. I'm sorry, Val. I don't want to be annoying or anything like that. But, he seemed exhausted, but then continued. I know you're married and all that, but I hope if you're not doing anything, you might want to go out with me? Val studied his face thoughtfully, looking for something indefinable. He was right she was married, but she also didn't do anything this weekend thanks to her husband going on a brainwashing expedition. I mean, you can come with your husband if you want, Ralph stammered, his face flushed. Val managed to keep from laughing, but couldn't suppress a smile. God, am I making a complete ass of myself? He grinned, trying to hide his embarrassment. Val relented. Not hopeless, in fact, maybe not hopeless at all. What did you mean by asking me out? Ralph seemed to have regained some composure. How about a movie and dinner? That sounds great, Val said, sliding off her bike. You can pick me up at 353 Mountain View Drive at 7. Heading to the locker room, she couldn't believe what she'd just done. Dane wanted her to be adventurous, and now she was fulfilling the bastard's wish. No, I'm not like that, she told herself. All I do is not sit at home waiting to run errands for his grace, the Duke of Absence. But did that make her the Duchess of Abstinence? And what about her reaction to Ralph's help in the bench press and the fact that she didn't wipe the sweat off her chest? What was it? Ralph was at the gate that evening at a quarter to seven. Val was nervous opening the door, but not nearly as nervous as Ralph seemed to be. He seemed ready to run away at the first sign of trouble trouble that Ralph feared, she suspected feared the reaction of an angry husband. Obviously, 
He put a lot of effort into looking his best, and he did it very well. Shyly polite. His 6 feet 3 inches well-muscled frame was also 10 years younger than her. Again, she wondered what exactly she was doing. What was her purpose in this adventure? She had no intention of anything happening between them of that she was sure. But why was she trying so hard to look her best? And why did she have butterflies in her stomach? Returning home early, she spent almost two hours preparing. She took a shower and shaved her legs, even trimmed a bush, but it wasn't even close to being on public display. No man except her husband has ever seen her naked and that won't change. She chose thin lacy black underwear the kind that made Dane's boner instantly stand up. A black and white miniskirt and matching blouse perfectly accentuated her figure. High-heeled sandals left the legs bare and, and showed them off at their best. Goosebumps ran down my buttocks as the breeze swept over my thong-clad bottom. She looked fantastic and she knew it. She felt another pang of foreboding. But now it was too late to back down, even if she wanted to, for any reason. She decided that she would enjoy the walk, and he would enjoy the thrill of finally getting his date. At the end of the night, she will easily send him away, but hopefully he will understand everything before that. I'll get my things, and then we can hit the road. Ralph seemed to feel much calmer as they got into his little Toyota and set off. By the time they got to the mall located near her house, they were chatting like old friends. He told her that he had bought movie tickets he didn't know what her taste was, so he hoped she would approve of his choice. She also caught the glances he stole at her and enjoyed every moment of his admiration, even though she wasn't going to show it. Once inside, Ralph offered them something to drink before the session so they ended up ordering milkshakes at one of the ice cream parlors. Val also noticed how much attention they attracted. At first, she attributed it to the age difference, but then she felt that the attention was not judgmental, but caused by the fact that they were an amazing couple. By the time they entered the theater, she knew that he didn't currently have a girlfriend, what his career intentions were, as well as all those other things that were usually shared on a first date. As they settled into their seats, she wondered where such conversations with Dane had gone. She and Dane had shared their dreams once. Two now they were constantly busy trying to make it to the next month. It was a sad condemnation of modern life. When the lights went out and the commercial started, Ralph would occasionally lean over to whisper some inconsequential phrase to her, something she hoped he would stop doing as soon as the movie started, as it always annoyed her. Fortunately, he did so. A few minutes after the movie started, she noticed that he was nervous. She also realized that she was paying more attention to his concern than to the screen. She almost burst out laughing when she realized what the problem was, a problem she had last encountered at the age of 16. He was trying to figure out how to take her hand without losing a few teeth. Val actually felt a pang of sympathy for him. He was young, and she was actually using him for her own entertainment, either to get back at Dane or to bolster her failing ego whichever option she preferred. Dane had always told her that being a hunter wasn't as easy as women thought, and watching Ralph go out of his way, she couldn't help but feel sorry for the young man. But no matter how much she pitied him, this was the bed he had made, and he had to lie in it. She wasn't going to take him any further. He wanted to take a chance and meet an elderly married woman, so he has to deal with the consequences. Any further help from her will only create an uncomfortable situation later. Leaving him alone with his plight, Val tried to focus on the film, but she couldn't. Ralph made heavy weather out of it. It took him a full 45 minutes to finally achieve hand-to-hand -hand contact. Val was also in a difficult position. On the one hand, she wanted to get out of this situation immediately. It was dangerous. On the other hand, she had to admit that she was flattered by the attention and more than a little angry at Dane. He was the one who suggested that she continue this adventure. He wanted to go to some boxing tournament instead of being here and doing his homework. Ralph gently took her hand. The moment of truth. Val left her hand where it was no harm, no foul that was all that could happen. She would see to it. Gradually, the pounding of her heart subsided, and she focused on the screen again, all too aware of the strength of the big young hand that was now woven into her arm. Those fingers were long and thick. When the credits rolled and the lights came on, the usual crush began on the way to the doors. Val and Ralph waited patiently for their turn to join the stream heading for the exit. Stepping into the human river, Ralph stood in front of her, 
taking her hand again so that they would not be separated. Politely but firmly, he moved through the crowd, pushing it apart like an icebreaker on its way to an arctic base. Val had to admit that she liked being taken care of like that. It wasn't that Dane didn't care about her. It was more a matter of respecting independence and something lost in marriage. It's been a while since she's been the center of such attention, not that it was Dane's fault. It just seemed like everything worked out when you were married for a while. Right now, Ralph was making her feel special. He made her feel vulnerable, small, and all those other things that gave her a warm feeling she hadn't felt in a while and she enjoyed it. Besides, nothing untoward had happened so far, and it wouldn't happen later. She was in control of the situation, and if he started frolicking, she would deal with him immediately. Outside, Ralph wouldn't let go of her hand. Instead, he led her in the direction of the restaurant, where he had apparently booked a table. Val smiled slightly at his newfound confidence. She doubted he was making any assumptions. He didn't seem like that. It was probably more a sense of achievement and chivalry. Besides, it didn't hurt she could handle this shy 18-year-old guy. If he was so inspired by just holding her hand, he could just as easily be destroyed. Besides, she was enjoying the adventure too. Did she really admit it? With a mental shrug, she put it aside. The fact is that she liked to walk through this crowd, holding the hand of this young stallion, risking seeing someone she knew. It was Friday night, and since this complex was so close to home, there might be people there who would find out that she was wandering with a guy. Maybe that was the excitement Dane wanted her to experience. She had forgotten what it felt like to be excited about being in someone's company, and she vowed that at the end of the evening she would thank Ralph for it and bring it back to her marriage. After settling into a corner booth at the cute little restaurant she'd only visited once, Val decided she wasn't mad at Dane anymore. In all likelihood, she owed him an apology. In fairness, she needs to take the bulk of the blame for the deterioration of their relationship. She was boring, not him. He was at least trying to stimulate their marriage. That's why she was here. But she was damned if she was going to admit it to him. The best thing he could get from her was a ceasefire. Pleased with this decision, she leaned back in her chair to enjoy the rest of the evening. Ralph was a nice guy. She hoped he wouldn't take it too personally that things had gone so far. An hour later, Val had to admit that she was enjoying herself more than she expected. Ralph was a good conversationalist and had a peculiar sense of humor. Sitting at right angles to each other at such a small table, they were close enough to each other to discuss anything without fear of being overheard. Such proximity also made casual touching inevitable so they should be treated accordingly. The food was delicious. They started with wine, browsing the menu, and then ordered snacks. Unlike most restaurant dishes, the pace of the evening was leisurely. They didn't even consider the possibilities for their main course until they removed the leftover snacks, and the same goes for dessert. By the time the waitress cleared away the empty dessert plates, Val was feeling a distinct buzz thanks to a glass of wine that somehow stayed full all evening. She was a casual drinker at best, and right now she was slightly over her usual maximum of two glasses. She knew that if it wasn't for the food, she would have been seriously drooling by now. Prudence would advise against such excesses on the first date, especially in the company of a young man who wanted to get into her pants. She liked Ralph's careful flirtations, the touch of his foot against hers under the table, and the occasional touch during conversation. If she hadn't been married, she probably would have been more than interested despite his age and subsequent lack of experience, which would have been against him. Or was it the other way around? Her mind was somewhat clouded about this. If she thought he was dangerous, she wouldn't have done it. But he was really sweet, and he was the perfect gentleman throughout the evening. She made it clear that she was happily married and was not going to cheat on her husband. It was just a walk with a friend, and he treated it very kindly. So Val decided to flirt a little letting him look into her cleavage when she leaned forward to say something, or letting the touch linger for a moment longer than necessary. As for Ralph, he didn't seem to feel intoxicated at all, except that all signs of his nervousness had disappeared. He was quick-witted, funny, and very charming. He also liked word games and hints, and they did it all evening. She seems very interested in you, Val remarked as the waitress set down their liqueurs and disappeared into the back to prepare the bill. The waitress had doe-like eyes. It won't help her at all, Ralph smiled. She doesn't have a chance and she knows it. She will never be able to match you. 
smile, compliment, smile, gratitude. When the bill arrived, Val pulled it towards her. No, you don't understand, Ralph said, his hand covering hers. This is my treat. I really enjoyed your company, and I asked you to meet me. If you remember, Val couldn't help but laugh at that. I remember, but you were very convincing. However, I don't want to offend you, but my budget will handle this better than yours, so let me contribute. You're a sweet lady, he smiled, but my young ego would never survive this. I'll tell you what, you make us some coffee later, and we'll get this over with. You won, she admitted, enjoying the light banter between them. After paying the bill, they headed for the door. This time Val didn't even think to refuse Ralph's offer of a hand. At least it helped hide the slight uncertainty in her gait. It was much quieter outside. Walking slowly past the closed shops of the mall, they admired the storefronts, stopping from time to time to look at something. Val wasn't sure at what point Ralph hugged her, but when they entered the parking lot, she had her arm around his waist and he had his arm around her shoulders. When he got to the car, he opened the door for her. Thanks, Val. It really was a great evening. Even if you agreed to it just to get rid of me. That's not true, Val replied playfully, turning to face him. At least not completely. I enjoyed it too. Suddenly, standing facing each other in the semi-darkness, electricity was felt in the air. Looking into his eyes, Val felt a slight shiver run down her spine as she suddenly realized the inevitability. She should never have brought it to this but Ralph had already leaned forward and lightly touched his lips to hers. Thanks anyway, he smiled, leading her into the car in stunned silence. The trip home was uneventful, but calm. Val's mind was racing. There she got into trouble and she was let off the hook because he was a gentleman. How did she feel about it? Part of her was furious, she realized with horror. Part of her wanted Ralph to do something more needed to be sure she was still wanted. Nonsense, another quiet voice replied, but she couldn't deny the excitement she felt throughout the evening throughout the day, as she looked forward to the evening. She'll have a lot to think about when Ralph drops her off at home. After reaching her house, Valerie used the remote control to open the gate, and Ralph drove up to the front door. Turning off the engine, he jumped out and opened her door. As Val walked to the door, she was wondering how she was going to spend her goodbyes when Ralph noticed how much he needed a cup of coffee right now. I probably drank a little more wine than usual, he laughed. But it's your fault. You've been such charming company. Val braked. To say no would be rude and she seems to have offered him a cup of coffee in a restaurant. Did he think she agreed to a cup? It didn't really matter she couldn't gracefully extricate herself at that moment and he didn't deserve to be rebuffed just because she couldn't set and impose boundaries. Well, then I'd better make some decent coffee, don't you think? She replied. Ralph followed Valerie into the kitchen, taking a seat in the breakfast nook while she made coffee. She rarely drank instant coffee, preferring to grind the beans just before putting the coffee in the coffee maker. As she moved around the kitchen, she was well aware that Ralph's eyes were following her every move. They hadn't exchanged much of a word since they'd entered the house, and she could feel the tension building up again. Val felt better than she had in a long time. Standing on tiptoe to reach for something, she felt her calf muscles tighten and took a pose so that he could enjoy the sight. What struck her was that she wanted to show herself like this she enjoyed his attention. What the hell are you trying to do? A quiet voice warned, but she had long since stopped listening to quiet voices right now she was completely enjoying the moment. When she finished making coffee, she waited for the coffee maker to start bubbling. Looking into the darkness outside the window, she caught some movement in the reflection of the glass. It was Ralph getting up from his chair. Val's heart started pounding. She knew exactly what was going on and realized that this was what she had wanted all day from the moment they started the bench press this morning, right up to the moment she saw him moving towards her. But now that the moment had come, she was terrified. She froze, watching his figure approach her from behind. The touch of his hands on her forearms sent an electric shock through her, but she didn't turn around and wave him away. He began to gently stroke her hands, pulling her closer to his own warmth. If you don't want this, tell me now, he whispered, nuzzling her neck. We shouldn't do this, she said softly, arching her back slightly. That's not what I asked you, Ralph replied, hugging her. Val didn't answer. 
He held her like that for a while before he started kissing her neck again. He slowly tilted her head back, exposing her neck and the line of her chin, all the while leaving light kisses closer to her mouth. The first kiss fluttered across her lips like a butterfly and lit a fire that she knew from the moment he took her hand in the theater would get out of control. When his hands slid down her arms to her hips, she felt a hardness pushing her back. Ralph was obviously excited too. As his hands explored her stomach, she arched her back even more, pressing her buttocks tightly against him. In response, he slowly raised his hands in the air. Now he was on a roll, stopped for the shortest moment, and then found the zipper on her blouse in front and pulled it down, very slowly and very deliberately. For a brief moment, she panicked, knowing that no man except Dane had ever undressed her, but Ralph's hands were on her shoulders again, silencing her while his mouth devoured her neck. Valerie squirmed. He snatched another sigh from her as his hands slid down her short skirt and then changed their course, pulling the scant cover behind them. Instinctively, she reached down to stop him, but he only took her wrists in one hand and pulled them aside. Holding her in this position, he attacked her mouth again, and Valeria took the fight on herself. A tongue duel ensued, and she invaded his mouth. When he released her hands, she pressed his face even closer to hers. Panting, she bent down to stop him, but this time he pulled her arm behind her back. You better take care of it, he muttered. This was the first man other than her husband she had ever touched so she had little real experience with size, but he seemed big enough to make her shudder. She was melting under Ralph's fingers. He stroked her slippery lips tightly, lightly inserting his middle finger into the hole with each downward movement. It dripped from her. She put her other hand behind her back, trying to restrain or free the monster that was nesting in her hand. Suddenly Ralph's hands were on her shoulders again, turning her to face him. She barely noticed when he picked her up and carried her into the living room. Laying her on the sofa, he spread her legs and leaned forward. Even before she realized what he was going to do, his tongue slashed her slit from bow to stern, causing her to shudder and scream. She had never been one to enjoy making love while feeling too shy and insecure. But right now, the insecurities were forgotten. Ralph's mouth was playing a symphony on her sensitive core. Val had never felt so good in a situation that was out of control. Her racing heart calmed down, and Valerie smiled gratefully at him. Apparently satisfied with his performance, he stood up, staring with hungry eyes at the obscenely sprawled body. Don't move, he commanded, now completely unlike the shy boy. She knew that he had played her beautifully, and she gladly agreed to it. Now it was too late to change his mind, and he really deserved a fair reward for his work. It looked like he already had something on his mind. Taking off his shirt, he took his time, showing himself in all his glory. He had a right to be proud of his physique and his enormous size made her feel small and vulnerable a feeling she liked. Then came the trousers, and finally he showed his grand prize. Val wasn't going to rush in search of a ruler to take measurements, but it was big enough, and she felt a shiver of fear shoot through her at the thought of having to adjust to it. When she saw him stroking his shaft, she felt a surge of warmth in her womb. Involuntarily, her hand twitched to rub itself, then stopped. Rub yourself, he ordered. Val hesitated. Come on. He croaked, and she obeyed. Timidly at first, then boldly, she touched herself the way she wanted him to touch her. Watching her, Ralph seemed mesmerized, watching her fingers dance around themselves, glinting in the lamplight. When he saw her hips begin to sway, he took the hint. She could see in his eyes that he knew exactly what she wanted right now. She wanted to be used plain and simple. And Ralph used her. Resolutely spreading her legs, he threw them over his shoulders, stood up and entered her in one smooth motion. Valerie felt like this. Despite its size, there was no pain or discomfort. Just the pleasure of being filled more than ever before. Without thinking about what he was doing, she felt a wave wash over her. Val twitched wildly. Valerie felt her consciousness evaporate. When she finally managed to collect her thoughts, Val noticed Ralph's hands, which were already working their magic again. Suddenly Ralph pulled away, sat down, and motioned for her to switch places. Changing the angle did wonderful things to her, filling her from different sides. 
Suddenly, he stood up, supporting her with one hand, and with the other pulling her face to his for a passionate kiss. It's time for a change, he muttered, heading for the door. You're crazy, she gasped, realizing that he was heading for the exit. Someone will see us. Wouldn't that be fun? He replied, laughing. Ralph went outside, putting his arm around her waist. The cool night air awakened her senses, and then he put her back on the hood of his car so that anyone who walked down the street or looked over the wall could see it. Val felt another crescendo approaching when he pulled away again. Opening her eyes, she caught another of his smiles as he turned her over. A moment later, he spread her legs so wide that the only way to keep her balance was to lean on her hands. Val felt wanton and completely alive. Soon, his punches turned into another sensory overload, almost knocking her off her feet. I'm coming, coming. She almost screamed when the wave finally receded. It seemed like a very long time before her shaky legs seemed to be able to support her in any way. My God, Ralph, she sighed. You're an energizer rabbit. He laughed. I'm trying to please ma'am. You're amazing, sir, but you don't play with the skill of a shy boy. You've played before. He laughed again. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Val couldn't argue. The perfect seduction? What is it? She asked, looking into his eyes. Yes, he replied simply. And I will never forget it, and I will always respect it. It's not quite perfect yet, she quipped turning him around to sit on the hood. You've put in a lot of effort to please me. Now it's my turn. Moving closer to him, Valerie slowly began stroking his entire length. Not now, she thought to herself, but soon. Ralph put his hands on her head, urging her on, every muscle in his body now tensing and begging for release. The effect was instantaneous. The effect was impressive. Ralph began to sway back and forth like a flag in a hurricane. She knew with all her being that this was only the first step in a journey to an inexplicable, indefinite pleasure. And this path was irrevocably and hopelessly sucking her in like a whirlpool.